All right, Shalom. All prayers are going on. It goes to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Kakwadash. The belongs to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. As always, peace and blessings to the elect. Uh, this is another, um, this is dealing with the, uh, the mark of the beast. And, uh, of course, there's more and more updates um, dealing with uh, the microchip, which is indeed the mark of the beast. Spoken about in Revelation, the 13th chapter. So I just got a couple articles, you know, just to update um, brothers and sisters on the, um, you know, the information that's um, coming out. Okay. It says here, it says uh, in Sweden. Uh, now, this is from uh, the, the Silver Post, by the way. All right. It says in Sweden, uh, 3,500 implanted under the skin chip that you can pay for the good, so I'm guessing this is probably a um, translation article, but uh, it's just something real quick. It says in Sweden, more than 3,500 people volunteered to embed himself in the hand of the electronic RFID chip. Uh, implanted under the skin, the device allows them to open doors without keys, to travel on public transport without a ticket, and pay for purchases using hand instead of a credit card. All right. So, you got more and more of these different websites uh, and these different articles coming out proving to you that in order to pay for things with your hand, you have to have this microchip, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, and I, it's not a real long article. I'm just going to finish it out. It says, it was fun to try something new and learn how it can make life easier in the future, said project participant Swedish Ulrich Selling. Over the past year, Smart Implants has replaced her wallet and a pass to the fitness club. Okay, so this new Smart Implant, because you know you got smart everything now. Smartphone, smart watch, smart car, smart house. Okay, <clears throat> so this new Smart Implant, it's, it's, it's basically uh, uh, you know, becoming a new convenience for, you know, for buying items. OK, this is over the past year. Smart Implant has replaced her wallet and a pass to the fitness club. The developers believe that the chip is more effective than smartphones, which also began to be used to make purchases. Right. And, uh, you know, by the way, China, I believe, is the leading the leading uh, country with mobile transactions, you know, using the smartphone. So, you know, the only next possible step in order to upgrade is to actually get the RFID or NFC microchip to pay for things, you know, and, and uh, you know, buy what you need, you know, with your hand. Okay. It says, uh, some experts praise the innovation with skepticism, noting that in the absence of guarantees of confidentiality, uh, such chips can become a nightmare for digital security. Uh, it says, recall that in the credit the Visa credit card will embed the fingerprint scanner. Visa believes that the new approach will quickly become dominant, right? And these different, um, uh, I'm not too sure about that, but these, these Visa cards, these debit credit cards, MasterCard, they all have these, um, they do have these uh, EMV microchips, you know, to where you can go to the register, pretty much any store now here in America, and uh, it's pretty much become a standard where you can either swipe your card or insert your chip into the uh, chip reader. Okay. So the market of beast is definitely becoming um, 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 mainstream. And soon it's going to be the new upgrade and the new smart device. Okay. Um, and I had another article here. Let's see. Uh, from the. Uh, right. <coughs> Now, this is from the, uh, the Gothamist.com, and it says here, it says, contactless subway turnstiles are here. Well, sort of. So it says, you're one step closer to simply flicking your sub subcontaneous RFID hand implant in the general direction of a subway scanner, data harvester, and gliding aboard a high-speed MTA monorail to the stars. The MTA will begin a gradual four-year phase-out of the Metro card. 
next year. And I believe brothers in uh, New York have brought this ha- have brought this information out. <clears throat> but nonetheless, the spirit is you know having me bring it out again. It says, and now the first photos of a turnstile with a cardless scanner, like this one at Penn Station, have been popping up on Facebook and Instagram this week. The in the MTA's forthcoming contactless turnstile system will support a custom smartphone app and cars with NFC technology. The app and interface are being designed by Cubic, which was awarded a $573 million contract to roll out the program last November. Uh, the scanners will be insp- installed at 500 turnstiles and on 600 buses starting next May and eventually accept both Apple Pay and Google Pay. So, so you can use your NFC smartphone or you know, the car or even you know the microchip to actually pay for a bus pass, man. It says the MTA expects contactless payment to be system-wide by 2023, by which time the Metro car will be as quaint as a subway token. Uh, the MTA began testing the contactless turnstiles last fall in select stations, including Grand Central, Atlantic Avenue, Barclay Center, 14th Street, 7th Avenue, and Penn Station. These pilot turnstile scanners only work with the MTA's eTix app, which is meant to connect Long Island Railroad, Metro North, and subway riders. An MTA spokesperson confirmed that the scanners are being used for an employee-only pilot that is currently underway. Okay, so now this is just, you know, an update on how more and more convenient the NFC RFID microchip technology is becoming uh, uh, convenient for, you know, the populace out there. Okay. Um, The mark of the beast is on the way, man. If you can't see that the mark of the beast is the microchip, then you're a, a damn fool, man. Okay. ISUPK, IUIC, okay, they don't have the truth, okay? They don't have the truth because they teach otherwise when it comes to the mark of the beast. They don't have the truth, man, okay? The Israelite group that has the full 100% truth is without a shadow of a doubt, Great Millstone, okay? The spirit of Yahweh Bashman Awashah is resting upon, upon the apostles, all right, and is being distributed through the through the the measurement of faith through the Holy Spirit to the other brothers, elders, and teachers and, and, and prophets of Great Millstone as well to push out this word as one body of uh of uh, Yahweh Shai, Hamashayat. We have the truth. Okay? And it's becoming more and more undeniable. That's why you don't hear uh uh um um IUIC speak, you know, on a chip. You don't hear Nate speak on the chip, okay? So if you're following these groups, ISUBK, talking about this an embargo or Christianity, no, man, okay? Here it is, the RFID hand implant within your hand is going to be used to pay for a bus or a train ticket in New York where, you know, these uh, uh, uh Israelite groups are mainly located, man. Okay? So what are they going to say when that actually goes goes uh, widespread? Okay? What about those people over there in uh, Sweden, man? Are you using the, uh, the uh, RFID implant, you know, to pay for train tickets and things, man. Okay? Hey, man, the truth is here, man. Okay? And I have one more article. Right now, this is from digitaltrends.com. It says, uh, who controls the tech inside us? Budding biohackers are shaping cyborg law. All right. This came out July 4, 2018. And this is just dealing with uh, uh, actually, you know, controlling the, 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 you know, the way that these implants are actually being used. Okay, but anyway, it says, Karen Sandler has a complicated relationship with her pacemaker. On the one hand, the device has the power to save her life. On the other, it sometimes suddenly and unnecessarily shocks her, mistaking a slight aberration in her heartbeat as a call for help. All right, so, so this woman has a, a, a pacemaker. But nonetheless, it's dealing with these, uh, 
uh, implants. Okay. Now, what I want to speak on is this. All right. It says uh, she's one of a handful of modern day cyborgs, you know, or biohackers. That's basically what they're calling these people that actually have these implants within their bodies. Okay. Uh, you know, basic tech, technological implants in general. It says uh, she's one of a handful of modern day cyborgs fighting for control of the tech that's in their bodies. This might seems like an esoteric issue, a topic that impacts the fraction of the population fitted with a medical device, prosthesis, prosthesis, say that word, prosthesis, or experimental implant. But as the number of people who are tethered to a device of some kind increases, cyborg rights and cyborg laws are bound to affect us all. Because eventually they want everybody implanted with this microchip. So they, so you know, here you know they're already talking about, um, you know, having you know cyborg laws. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, I just want to get you know the meat out of this article. Uh, because it's basically just dealing with the um, rights people have. Here we go. Okay. It says this case here. This case might not be as unusual as the Australian judge thinks. Biohackers around the world, not least among them, our own emerging tech editor, have embedded NFC chips and right size RFID tags into the flesh of their hands. In their hands, right? Using the tidying implants to open apps, unlock doors, and store personal data. Entire countries are even on board. Last year, Sweden, okay, once again, Sweden is being uh, uh, used as a a main example, it says Sweden began a trial using NFC implants for public transport. Around 1,500 test subjects had an NFC chip, and, and now it's, it's about 3,500. It says uh, embedded under their skin, enabling them to check in at train stations, train stations simply by swiping their hands. Uh, implants and other physical modifications are interesting because the body is in many respects a protected space under our laws, Chong says. We are going to see the emergence of a lot of gradations in that protection. So basically they want to come up with some kind of laws or regulations to deal with people that have these implants, man. Okay? So it's, it's, it's basically becoming a... Uh, a um, a uh, important topic in the te- in the te- technological world, okay, um, and going beyond. But that's mainly the point. Um, I'll leave links to these articles, and the brothers want to read them and go into further information. Um, I'm not going to bring out the scripture. Uh, Revelation 13 and uh, 16 uh, and 17 are the main scriptures. That we all know by heart. Um, amen. The mark of the beast is is, is definitely um, here, and soon it will be mandatory. All right. And when it, it does become mandatory, us of the hopeful elect and the elect in general, as as scripture states, are not going to take the chip because the Lord Yahweh Bashmi is going to destroy you. All right. So this has been the mark of the beast. Um, all praise and glory and honor goes to Yahweh Bashmi Awashai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that puts the truth well and has taught me this truth. Uh, peace and blessings to the elect and don't take the mark of the beast, which is the microchip, the implantable microchip. Shalom.